Welcome to PowerShell Bytes Episode 5. Today's episode is a little bit different than normal. Um, basically, I saw a Twitter conversation about a week and a half ago, and someone basically posted something to the effect of, hey, did you know that you can use um, most or a lot of the git commandlets without actually putting the uh, git verb prefix? And I thought, huh, I'd never heard of that before. So sure enough, I typed in uh, service, and it worked as git service. I typed in the event log, and sure enough, it worked as if I typed get event log. <clears throat> and I was kind of intrigued, and I kept on run, uh, reading through the basically Twitter conversation. People were saying different things, and then a uh, person by the name of Bo Prox posted a link to his blog post explaining what was going on. And uh, I read that blog post. It was really neat, and I was fascinated by kind of a piece of trivia. And he really explained what's going on behind the scenes, and I thought, hey, that, that would be a great idea to... Uh, do for a video. Now, full credit goes to him. This is not my original idea, and I don't want anybody thinking that it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a bit of a cold here. So, anyways, I'll go ahead and do a git service, <coughs> you know, bits. Obviously, you'll get, you know, <coughs> the uh, service bits, but I can also type here just service, and it will do the same thing. Uh, I could continue doing this. So let's say git event log. Um, so application, we'll type the newest first, um, newest one of uh, the event log. I can take away the git here, and <clears throat> the effect will be the same. So the question is, you know, what is going on behind the scenes? This just seems like some something really weird and odd is going on going on you know, behind PowerShells. But it is completely intentional, and we can use this command called trace command to figure out what's going on here. So if you want more information on trace command, look at the help document. Um, you know, I'm still learning PowerShell at the moment. I'm no expert, and uh, this is the first time I ever heard of you know trace command. And maybe maybe I've heard of it before, but I've never really dived in and used it until now. And there's some pretty cool um, things you can do. Obviously, kind of debugging things, and uh, we're going to use this tool to figure out what's going on behind the scenes. So first, <clears throat> I'm going to be basically running the normal git, um, git service command to show you what goes on in normal circumstances and then what happens when you leave out the prefix. <clears throat> so I'm going to use this, I'm going to type in git service bits <clears throat> and I have to run a switch called ps host so it outputs this to the screen. So we'll go ahead and run this and just notice here I'm using uh, this name here, there's a bunch of different things you can do with the uh, trace command but I'm using the command discovery part, part of that. And you can again, you can look at the help document to uh, see the different ways you can use this commandlet. So here it has some debug information. It says, looking up commandlet, git service. So obviously something's going on with the PowerShell engine here. <clears throat> and then it's saying git service, or commandlet found git service. And then it runs that commandlet. So that's what happens under normal circumstances. So let's take a look at what happens when you leave out the git prefix here. <clears throat> okay, that's a lot of, lot of stuff going on here, but in results, <clears throat> it's producing the same thing. So let's scroll up, and I'm going to start at the very, very top. And some things may start looking familiar here. <clears throat> it says looking up command service. And then it's showing something else. If you look up here, it's looking up the git service, and it says command found. So that's not happening here. And then you'll see this path extension and a bunch of different extensions, com, exe, and then down here you'll see another path, which is a bunch of different locations. Now, if you're familiar with uh, environment variables, this you probably recognize these. These are <coughs> different environment vari variables. These are the path extensions for basically you know, the common extensions, and I mean, the, and this is the path variable, which will give a bunch of different paths to applications. So when you type in CMD and it uh, opens up command prompt, it's actually looking at the environment uh, variable path to look up the location for that command. And so that's basically what's going on here. <clears throat> you start looking down, it says looking for service.ps1 and this location, which is the first path in this path variable. So what happens here is, first of all, it's looking, basically adding the extension, all the PowerShell extensions on at first and iterating through every single one of these <clears throat> path locations but it also is tacking on all these path extensions. So basically what's happening is it's iterating through the 
uh, path variable, basically the different path locations, and then iterating through, for each of those path locations, all the different extensions and seeing if it can find a command. So it's looking for service.ps1, so a PowerShell script, uh, service.com, service.exe. It'll keep going on. You'll see it's going over and over and over again for every single location in the path variable. This goes on and on and on all the way. I'll scroll to the bottom here. <clears throat> and you'll still see the command service was not found. Trying again with the git dash prepended. So then you look down here, it says looking up command git service. So what's going on, basically, if it cannot find a command for that anywhere else, it's actually appending or prepending, I guess you could say, the git prefix on top of the service, and then going through and seeing if there's a command for that. And sure enough, it finds a commandlet and it runs it. Obviously, this isn't the most efficient use of your resources, but it's a neat kind of piece of trivia, and I thought I would do a video on here on about this. And obviously, the use for trace command, you know, you could expand that to actually do some, you know, real debugging. So I just thought it was neat and that I would share it with you guys. Thank you.